world, it's good to be with you again. I am Ken Simmons, and this is The Ken Simmons Show. And The Ken Simmons Show is on the move. As you can tell, we're not in the studio. Okay, we are at the COA. We were here not too long ago doing a craft fair, and we came back here because we're going to do an interview with a guy that you're all familiar with, a lot I'm familiar with, great credit to the community, and we'll go all through that. But before that, we're going to do a little bit of a monologue. Remember now, we're not in the studio, we're at the COA, Council on Aging. I, uh, I, uh, the other night I'm watching uh, Channel 13, as I often do, uh, primarily to see my own show, but to watch John McKeague, Larry Erickson, and whatever else is on, because if you're not watching Channel 13, you're missing a great bit. You're missing a lot. But I, I, the other day, I, last night, I saw on the bulletin board, uh, there's a spaghetti dinner on November 17th at such and such a place. I forget the place now. And uh, there's something else going on November 8th, and something else going on uh, in October. We went back that far. And, we are recording this on December 10th. So I said to myself, somebody at the station is screwing up. They're not taking off what's already been. But then I said, no, that's not what they're doing. How clever they are, they want you to see what you missed. That's why they're leaving it on the bulletin board. So whoever's doing it, and I happen to know who's doing it, by the way, no name is mentioned, his initials are KG. But it's okay. It's all right. Everything is going good. So listen, we're going to uh, do an interview with a guy that you, you, you're going to love. You always have. You always will. Uh, so don't go away. Take off your shoes. Pour yourself your favorite beverage. And I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. As I told you, I've uh, got a very interesting guest. All my, all my guests are interesting. Uh, this guy is especially interesting. He's the uh, chief of police here in the town of Carver. Uh, he runs a great department. I'm not going to embarrass him by saying that. He's a good-looking guy. I'm not going to embarrass him by saying that. He's a smart guy. I'm not going to embarrass him by saying that, but he's all of those things. Hi, Chief. How are you? Ken, good, good morning. Thank good you for coming. Nice Merry see Christmas you. before we start. Thank you, Ken. Happy Hanukkah to you. Thank you so much. And to you people out there, by the way, uh, Merry Christmas. I hope this runs before Christmas comes along. Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Hanukkah, uh, Feliz Navidad, uh, and for all the other religions, however you celebrate, I certainly wish you all the best. Chief, I had a, a, a situation come up the other day. I was having breakfast with my kids. Uh, we have breakfast every Saturday. And um, one of them carries. He's got a permit, a license. And uh, he was telling me that he heard that there's going to be a bill passed to, in other words, if you've got a license in Massachusetts and you're carrying, you can now carry your weapon into another state. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything to that effect? I, I haven't seen anything or heard anything. Sure. Does it make any sense to you? Well, I have heard that the, the House of Representatives has passed a preliminary bill that needs to be going before the Senate um, and for further uh, review regarding that um, reciprocal carry across the 50 states, similar to if you were dri have a driver's license in Mass, you can drive in Rhode Island and the other states. I don't know enough about the bill, the proposed bill, to speak intelligently on it today. Um, the idea is, you know, causes some people some heartaches and some people um, joy because the, the, the um, they would like to see that type of a situation. Um, I can't say that I'm opposed to it. I think that it would need to be vetted and it would need to have be a process um, similar to at some point in time we went to driver's licenses. I'm sure every state issued driver's license in, in a different fashion and um, those driver's licenses became accepted across the country uh, because they had a process. I imagine that this type of situation would require some type of a process. There are states out there that don't require anything to carry a firearm. There are states that have a vetting process like Massachusetts that require a license to carry a firearm. I would think before you could allow carry across the, those permits to be valid, you'd have to have a permitting process in each state so that yeah. there was a permit. That uh, seems likely to me. It would, yeah. it would, it, that would make, most, make sense. I don't, I don't know. Again, I can't speak intelligently on the proposed bill because I haven't read it. I've only heard on the news like you have. Um, but I imagine if they're going to accomplish something along those lines, there would be, have to be 
um, some consideration that all states would have to at least meet, meet some minim minimum standards before issuing those licenses for them to be valid, just like they do with a driver's license. A driver's license in mass is valid in every state in the union, um, but that's possibly because there is a process and some standards you have to reach to get be granted a driver's license. So I would imagine it'd have to be something like that, but again, I don't, uh, I don't have any more. Well, it's, it's an interesting prospect. Yes, it's a kind of long. Obviously, obviously it when I work in New York City, and I think I'm right on this now, but you probably know more about it than I do, uh, if you wanted to carry in New York City, you had to have a license, of course, but you could only have a license in a certain precinct. In other words, you couldn't go from precinct to precinct mm -hmm. with that weapon. Right. Unless you had a license in each precinct. Sure. I don't know much about the licensing in New York City, but it sounds like that was pretty onerous. I mean, I don't know how, yeah. I don't know how big the precincts are in New York City, but I imagine you might have crossed over well, those lines more than once in a day, probably. My problem was I didn't know what precinct I was in ever. Right, sure. How do you, how do you determine yeah. that? You have to carry a map with you? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, another thing that came up with, that, with this conversation with my kids, um, you don't have to have a license to carry in Vermont. Now, I am certainly in favor of carrying a gun, constitutional right and all that. But I think that the police in the state or whatever authority controls that should have a licensing thing so that they can check when, whether a man is a felon. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they tell me, all you got to do is go in and buy a gun, strap it on. Is that true? I don't know about what the laws are in Vermont. Again, I, I don't. Um, I'm not familiar with the Vermont laws, but I know that there are some states that have lower standards for carrying a firearm. Again, as we said, I'm a big proponent of the Second Amendment. I'm a life member of the NRA, and I believe in people's rights to carry firearms. Um, we follow the law in Massachusetts. We interpret that law, and we um, enforce that law moving forward. We issue licenses to carry to people who who apply. Um, that process allows for a background check of any criminal matters, if they're convicted of a felony or uh, any uh, violent crimes. It also permits for a mental health check to make sure to, to, to yeah. delve into if there's any issues like that. And I think that um, in keeping with people's rights, their Second Amendment rights, that there needs to be a process where we do um, vet people before they carry a firearm in public. It's, uh, it's a tough process. You know, it's tough. Yeah. It's hard to... to um, to say, okay, well, everybody has the right to carry a firearm, which I think the Constitution guarantees, but th those rights can be um, uh, can be monitored, can be checked by the government, and they should be. They, I mean, it's a, it's a process that needs Absolutely. to be. We, we see, we've seen some, uh, we see more mental health issues result in uh, firearms-related deaths than anything else, and obviously, um, as a society, we have an interest in, in preventing those if we can. So somebody checking on those is probably a good thing. Again, I can't speak to what Vermont does or doesn't do because I've never applied and never right. had to, to uh, work there. Um, but certainly Massachusetts has a, uh, has a process that is, has been vetted, that has been worked on by both sides. Know, both sides of the uh, of the argument, whether you're pro-gun or anti-gun, and, and come up with some regulations that work, and uh, we institute them here. Well, right. you know, my son lived in New Hampshire. He owned a business there. He's a contractor up there in New Hampshire. And he said to me, a little different than Vermont, you can buy a gun in New Hampshire without a license. You can't carry it. Mm -hmm. To carry it, you have to have a license. But I think that's wrong. I think if you're going to buy a gun, you want to know who the devil is buying the gun. And I think you agree with that. Well, I, th I think there needs to be some kind of a process to, yeah. to, just to make sure. Yeah. And I think that um, the great part about our country being 50 states is that each state has their ability to interpret the Constitution and its yeah. own Constitution in its way so that the people living in that state get to apply how what they feel is in their best, best interest. And I, I uh, would assume that Vermont voters have... have Good old states' said, rights. Yes. States' rights. I, um, I should have explained to you before we started that uh, we are at the COA, the Council on Aging, with Chief Duffley. He comes here every other Tuesday. Am I right on that? Um, the second Tuesday of the month. Second Tuesday of the month. And uh, he mingles with the people, answers their questions. Uh, I personally think that's, I think that's great, that he can take time out of his busy day to mingle with the people. I, I, I compliment you for that. That's no, great. I appreciate it. We're fortunate that we have some good people back at the station handling the matters that need to be handled today, and I have the opportunity to, to come out of my office and, and make myself available to the public, um, and, I, and we like to do that, whether it's the COA or at the school or anywhere we can, yeah. because it's, I think it's an important role for the police chief to, to uh, handle is to be accessible, I so that people who want to talk to me don't have to come to my station to do it. They can meet me here. I couldn't agree with you more. 
Yeah. I was born and brought up in Randolph. It was a small town and 3,500 people. And we had two policemen, a chief and an officer. And they would always be on the main street, always walking up and down. And in New York, they'd have police on mm -hmm. the streets that walk up and down. Okay, um, one more question I want to ask you in, in this segment is uh, this time of year, is there a lot of DUI this time of year? Is this a thing that you have to be watching out for? Uh, well, I, I the think. Holidays and parties and sure. all that. I think obviously holiday parties bring a certain amount of that to, to, to play. Um, we're, we're watching out for it all year round. Um, during this time of year, they, the, the, uh, there are some uh, grants that allow for um, checking on that to make sure that people aren't operating under the influence. And obviously, we, we would strongly suggest if you're going to go to a holiday party, designate a driver and, and not drive um, just because uh, DUI affects so many lives, not just yours. You know what I mean? It's not if you crash your car under the influence, it certainly can harm so many other people. And uh, it, it brings such a. You know, just as, as I age, as I am, when I was younger, I would have a few beers and drive a car. Today, at my age, I wouldn't even smell a beer mm. and get behind a wheel. For this reason, at this age, your reflexes naturally slow down. And when you have a drink, they slow down to a dangerous degree. Right. And so anybody out there that's over the age of 55 or 60, please, not for your sake, but for my sake, because I like to walk. Please, don't have a drink and get behind the wheel. Get somebody to drive you. No shame in that. The shame is if you hurt somebody. It's Christmas time. Let's not have any tragedies. Okay, we're going to be, take a little break. We're going to be right back. Okay, we're back, and again, Chief Tufoli is still here. Uh, you know, it's difficult sometimes to uh, interview a police chief or a fire chief because something happens, they're out of here. That happened to me once in Randolph, and uh, we were, we were sh demonstrating how we could put a camera on a motorcycle, and we got it all hooked up, and the wires were all on, and the guy that was driving the motorcycle was on, and they got an emergency call and they needed the entire police force to go. And this guy on the motorcycle went with our camera all over the ground, all the wires all over the place. Oh boy. And it was a mess. That's too bad. You know, it's Christmas time, and I don't want to get too serious here with uh, Chief Griffley. Um, it's, you know, when you think about where we live, and I've only been here 16 years, so I'm a newcomer, but the fire department and the police department in the town of Carver, and please forgive me, I don't mean to embarrass you, but the truth is the truth, are exceptional, in my opinion. They deserve the best we can give them. And by that, I generally mean respect. Uh, I see these officers out there when all the building was going on, and they were on the street in all kinds of weather, with always with a smile on their face. And I stopped one day and I said to Dennis, so can I get you a cup of coffee? And he says, no, that would constitute a bribe. He was only kidding, of course, but I, that's the kind of guys that we've got in this town. And uh, I just wanted to say that. Um, what were we talking about when we were off camp? We took the break. We, we were talking about uh, uh, guns again, were we? We talked uh, a little bit about guns, yeah. yeah. In fact, if it's one second, though, th thank you for the compliments. We do. We are very fortunate in Cabo. We have a uh, great public safety between our yes. police, fire, and EMS. Yes. Our police department has uh, some very dedicated professional men and women that uh, continue to, to serve and protect on a daily basis. Um, and, and I'm very, very proud of all of them. This is not, this isn't me, this is our police department. And it's it made yeah. up of some very good, high quality men and women. And, and, I'm, and again, I'm very proud of them. So Brings thank you. up a, an interesting question at this time of the year. Uh, how do you schedule? your offices to work on Christmas Eve, especially the married ones, the sure. children. Well, we have, a, we have a rotating schedule that works. Uh, people are assigned a day off based on the, uh, the letter that they're assigned to for that uh, day off group. And 
whoever happens to come up on the holidays comes up on the holidays. But um, people work together, you know, especially people live in town to be able, if, you know, if working during the day and you're married, to try to get home and, and at least uh, spend a little bit of time with the, with their family. But it works out. We we have a we have a good group of people that work together to make it happen. And um, yeah. unfortunately, public safety, uh, definitely police officers have to spend. Uh, you know, we're on 24/7, and we we have to be there during uh, every day, whether it's a holiday or not. Yep. Um, Yep. It's it's what it's the job we chose to take, and you spend a lot of years um, doing that, and you miss out a lot of birthdays, a lot of holidays, but um, at the end of the day, it's part of public service, and, and we all uh, we I all guess accept you know that, that going we, in. Right, we all accept that as we as we enter the profession, and, and that's, how, that's how it works. So yeah. we do the best we can, but we, we do get by. And we're very fortunate, um, excuse me, the... Um, the public in Carver is is hugely uh, supportive of us, and uh, the the different types of treats that come in, especially on the holidays, for food and, and cupcakes and cookies and all kinds of good stuff know, to, to help take care of that. Make sure we're we're <laughs> well fed. Nice. So we, we're nice. greatly appreciated. Is uh, if if you if you brought a cake into the police station, this is a serious question. It's going to sound stupid. If I brought a cake in just because I like you guys. Is that a bribe? Is that no. something you can't accept? <laughs> no, we, 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 we take cakes and cookies and stuff like that. Okay. I mean, a bribe would be somebody bringing us a cake and saying, can you fix my speed and take it for it? <laughs> we wouldn't do that, but certainly if somebody wants to bring us a cake or some sweets, we, we're happy to oblige. We were talking off camera about the uh, toy drive. Yes. Could you elaborate on that just a little bit for the people watching out there? Because sure. that's an important thing. Sure. Another thing I'm very proud of is uh, this year, as, as we did last year, in, a, in conjunction with the Cava Police Department, the Cava Police Union, uh, Signs by Design, um, several local businesses, we're conducting a toy drive where several businesses have boxes, drop-off spots for unwrapped toys that we can give out to um, children in Carver that might be in need. Um, we do that all anonymously. Our, our school resource officer handles the, takes in the information of who needs them and uh, we take in the toys at several different locations and then we disperse them out to, to needy families in the community. Last Friday night we did a stuff a cruiser event at the uh, police station where we had uh, Santa Claus show up in a couple of hours, had some hot chocolate and cookies all supplied by those local businesses. Oh, that's and, great. Um, that's and we, gr we collected a whole bunch of toys that are going to be used to, wow. to help so make somebody's, some child's Christmas bright. Are you still accepting donations? Yes, we are. What, what constitutes the donation? Does it have to be new? Does it have to be Yeah, we're, we're collecting yep, new unwrapped toys um, or even gift cards um, that can be, that we can be given How about clothing? Um, we, I, we, didn't, we didn't take any clothing, but I imagine new clothing would be accepted too. Yeah, sure. New clothing. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, and we drop it off the police station? Yep, drop it off the police station or up at the dry cleaners in the center of town. Um, there are several different locations. I apologize, I didn't bring that with me. I okay. should not get that information. How about Shaw's? Is that a location? Do you think? No, we we haven't. We don't have a drop-off location at Shaw's, but okay. I'll find out locations and get them to you. Okay. Uh, so we have a uh, location. We we know it's the station yep. and the dry cleaners. The yes. new, yep. He's new in town, around. Uh, newer owners, but the dry cleaners been there for quite yeah. a while. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. I think that's uh, great. You, you mentioned signs by design. That's uh, Peter Allegrini. Happens to be a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and uh, he does more for people in the town than anybody knows. Yeah. He's, a, he's a very big supporter of the police department and, and the community itself yeah. and, is, and is, was very happy to be part of the community event that we had Friday night and was a big uh, uh, helper in getting that all set up. Yeah. Have you got all your Christmas shopping done? Me? Yeah, uh, you, yeah you. I'm talking I get, to you. I, yeah. get, I get some to still finish up on. <laughs> we'll see. I'll get there. The kids are all taken care of. How many kids do you have? I have uh, three between... Uh, Two from my first marriage and one of my second wife, and she also has two daughters, so there's five all total. You got five kids? I didn't know that. Holy mackerel. I, I'm saying holy mackerel because you look like a kid yourself, you know. <laughs> oh, thanks. No, I'm, getting, I'm getting older then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not really. Not really. How much time we got left, Chris? Because I've got an important event. We've got an important event. We've got about eight minutes left. Eight minutes? Okay. Ladies, this is all yours. Thank you. We've got a little, a little surprise coming up here. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to back out of the way for a minute. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> thank you very much. This is an appreciation. Oh, thank you, ladies. Uh, Too nice. All that you do for yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Do it's so much wonderful. for us. Yeah. So, oh. All the patience you have. Oh, thank you very much. I'm going to give everybody hugs. Yeah. Can we yeah. give hugs? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very thank much. You're very welcome. Right. Thank, yeah. you. thank you. We appreciate it. Nope. You're more than welcome. We appreciate you. Yeah, we appreciate everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to win. Yep, everybody. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's done. Want a hug? <laughs> yes, get in there. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very that much. Is you. <laughs> yeah. Should I open the card on camera? <laughs> Are we eating this today at lunch? Yes. 
Yes. All right. It looks good. To be taken back to oh, yeah, that's for all the... Yeah, that's yeah. for all the guys. All, the guys. all right. Well. To the yeah. um, police station. Yeah, the police station. station. Yep. Yes. Thank you all very much. That's so awesome. You're Thank you. Thank this you. was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Holy mackerel! All I can say is, wow! Yeah, Look that at that awesome. cake. That's yes. a diabetic. Yeah. That's a diabetic dream. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best cake. Best cake going. Cake yeah. Going. yeah. It looks good. Can I? Uh, no. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. Huh? Yeah, watch out. <laughs> Thank you, you very much. Oh, you, you ladies, you, I got to say something. You ladies are spectacular. You know that. Oh, that's because he's spectacular. Oh, yeah. Thank you. He is. A, I'll agree with that 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so wonderful. That's so it great. The best place to get it. Where oh, is that? We got to give him credit. Candida Meister. Candida Meister? Candida Meister. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's German. What, what's it yeah. mean? What's it? What's it mean? Do you know? No. 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 Anybody know what that means? Nope. Condita we'll Meister. Yeah, I'll have to yeah. look it up. Where, where are they located? Is there on an address on there? On Wood Road in Braintree. That's I, right. I, South 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 Plaza. Yes, I know right where that by is. It, it's right by. Uh, it's right by uh, an automobile. Ford yeah, agency. Yeah. 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 That's where yeah. It is. yeah, I know that very well. And that, that that's just a great tribute. That's that's so so great. Well thank you ladies. Thank you very much. We appreciate all of you. Thank you. Yeah, they're just they're wonderful to us. Wonderful. I'm just the lucky one that gets to get the cake and the card, but we'll bring it back and share it with everybody. Thank you very much. They come at Thanksgiving, they help serve. The, pol the police? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. yes. Oh, we could go on and on about they all the They buy all our pies for Thanksgiving. Yeah, they buy all our pies for Thanksgiving. They do? Yeah. I didn't know that. You never the, said the, that. The, the police union is a big, big supporter of the council. Yeah. We, we come down and we, yeah. serve the, we help serve the food and whatever we can do to help out. Yeah, it's a great community and we love being part of it. Yeah. It really is. The police union? Yep. Could you explain that just a little bit? Because I'm not sure I know what that is. That's well, certainly. The, who's the, on that? The police, the police union is made up of all of our police officers. The union is what does their negotiating for them and, and, and is their arm um, to allow them to do, um, to have fundraisers like the Carbon Night Out, um, to be able to do uh, philanthropic events in town, like coming out and help the council on aging or, or stuff like that. So it's a way that the police officers can give back um, to the town, um, not just in their public service, but in their in, in, in collecting donations and redistributing them through the, the town. The Detroit Drive is another example of that, whereas they spend their time um, collecting the toys and helping underprivileged kids and stuff. We get to, as police officers, we end up at a lot of in a, in a lot of people's lives at times that are not um, that can be tragic, that are not the best of times. And um, when you spend your career doing that, I think it becomes important to find a way to try to um, help people through those times. So this is the, the police union does a lot of. Um, a lot of work on raising funds and raising and, and collecting toys and stuff to, to help better people's lives, aside from the job that we do. But does the police, if a, if an officer does something that's in, that's questionable, my feeling about the police union is that they defend that officer. Well, a, a union is uh, any union, whether it's a police union or a union of firefighters or, or, or any the union of actors, or anybody like that is, is designed to, to help. Um, band together and, and support each other in times like that. So okay. yes, they, they do. If, if there's something, some kind of problem, they would band together to, to help that person. Um, and they negotiate contracts and stuff like that, which is a, an important role that they have, but like I said, it's, it's a more important role. It, it allows them to come together as a, as a fraternal organization and support the community itself at large. Yeah, So yes. but you said they, they negotiate contracts. Yep. So... See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little in the dark on that because if they're negotiating their own contract with who, you? No, not with me, with, with the town. The town. But, but like any union does, a union of, of any of them, a union of laborers. Are you negotiates. part of the union? No, I'm separate from the union. Okay. I was a member of the union until when I became When you were an officer? Yes. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a good organization. It's, it's, it does a lot of necessary things, again, negotiating the contracts um, and stuff like that. But uh, it, it also gives the... the uh, the police officers an organization to belong to that can help the community and be part of that. So, so it, it provides a lot of <coughs> uh, provides a lot of help to the community. As, as the ladies mentioned, um, they come down here on Thanksgiving, um, uh, St. Patrick's Day, uh, provide the pies on Thanksgiving. We serve the food and, and such. That's just so, great. Yeah. That's just great. That's just that's just another example of uh, what the public safety departments are doing in the town of Carver. And I, I, you know, I don't, I just don't know what to say. I'm not usually tongue-tied, but 
they do so doggone much. And uh, yeah, it's a job, yeah, they get paid for it. Yeah, they accept all this bad weather and holiday working and birthday and time not with their family. Yeah, they, I know that, don't give me that argument. But look what they do, <laughs> look what they give back to the town. I think it's incredible. Have you got anything else you'd like to say before we sign off? We only got about a minute. Just again, thank you for your time and, and, and Merry Christmas to you and anybody that wants to bring a toy down to the uh, to police station so we can uh, to disperse it out to people that need it in the community, Fair make somebody's Christmas bright, we'd appreciate it. Fair thank enough. you. Thank Chief, you. And again, I can't, can't say how much I like you. And what Thanks a great to the COA for this. It was, this was unexpected and very, very nice. We'll certainly enjoy trip. it. That was a total surprise yeah. for the chief. I don't know how he feels about yeah. it. I hate surprises. <laughs> but, but it was a great surprise and a great tribute to a great guy. Okay. Uh, we're going to sign off now. Uh, you're not going to get rid of me. I'm coming back with another Ken Simmons show. Might be after the holidays. <laughs> it might not be. Let's see what happens. In the meantime... Keep a sign in your heart. <laughs> Goodbye and God bless.